So what I wanted to do was take my, it's so generous that Tracy said over two decades, I think my team put that in my bio, um, but it's been 25 years I've been doing this work, studying and researching and trying to understand why great leaders, very similar to what Tracy and her team have done, why great leaders exist, how they exist, how they build their leadership muscles over time, across industry, across position, and even across roles. And the, what we've discovered in all of this work is something that, a framework that we call courageous leadership. And what I want to talk about today is one of the most important skills that we've discovered that drives success in hopefully many of your organizations, especially if you're already Freedom at Work members, um, but that drives success in organizations. Now, I know that we've already got a super enlightened audience here because in all my years of talking about courageous communication and courageous leadership, that poll that Tracy just ran of 70% of you saying that you had courageous communication at work, you are the anomalies in the corporate world. Um, Pre-COVID world, I do about 50 keynotes a year. We have 86 global facilitators that coach and teach our courageous leadership curriculum around the world. And if I were to ask that in an average corporate company, only 12% of people would note that they had courageous communication in their workplaces. Only 12%. So you guys are already super enlightened on this. Um, I think I'd change for this group. Why don't step it up a notch? I would have changed the poll to how many of you believe you have all the courageous communication you need in your workplace? It would be a very interesting, maybe different number that would come out of that. But I also have to say, John must be, a, you know, we're, we're friends from a different life because one of my favorite people to quote is George Bernard Shaw as well. And he has one of my favorite quotes, which is the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it's taken place. And I think all of us can relate to that, whether it's on very small issues I mean, how many of you have had that experience at work where you say to yourself, I swear I've told this person to do this like five times and nothing's happening. I know that I was clear in my expectations for this project. How could they possibly have thought dot, dot, dot? So as we've been traveling the globe and doing this work with you know, almost a quarter of a million leaders over the past two decades, we've discovered some pretty extraordinary things about courageous communication as it relates to creating the teams and the organizations that we need to thrive and not just survive but thrive during chaos and boy if we ever needed a time when i wish i could wave my magic wand and the entire world would be able to be skillful and respectful and proactive and successful at courageous communication, it's right now. I think regardless of where in the world you are, you'd probably agree with that. Now, I wanna make sure I'm clear about what I mean when I talk about courageous communication. And I have a really pretty simple, non-academic response to that. Courageous communication is my mind in my mind is any communication that gives you that, oh, do I have to feeling? Anybody out there? Anybody? Put a little like exclamation point in the chat box. If you have had that feeling in the past several hours maybe, or days or weeks or months, courageous communication and courageous conversations are those moments where we have that ting, that little buzz of anxiety, that moment of stress, that feeling that even if you're not worried about it or stressed about it, it's just, uh, do I have to do it? And I'll do that tomorrow. Have you ever noticed that those conversations just go day by day by day on your to-do list, right? 
So for me, that's a courageous communication. And it can be anything from the small everyday things. Um, you know, talking to somebody about, the, back when we had offices, <laughs> talking about somebody about a dress code issue in the office, all the way to performance issues, all the way to having to have a difficult conversation with a team that's failing against a goal or objective. So in my mind, courageous communication is anything that gives you that buzz, that little moment of anxiety, um, and holds you back in that moment from simply doing it. And we're gonna talk about that here in a second. So why do we even care about this? I mean, I know for many of us, you know, many times we'll just be like, ah, oh, if I ignore it, I'm sure it'll be fine later, right? But for most of us, we do care about it, especially the people on this call, and especially those of you who are interested in the Freedom at Work model. And this might come as a surprise to you all that, that believe that you've already got courageous communication within your workforce. But, you know, huge meta studies that executed most recently by Gallup says that 95% of a company's workforce struggles to speak up to their colleagues on difficult topics. Think about that. That's nine out of nine plus people out of 10 struggle with it when dealing with difficult conversations with their colleagues. 53%, so of all those folks who struggle, one in two are handling difficult situations by, you know, simply ignoring it because if I don't see it, it'll go away, right? Isn't that how that works? The problem will become invisible? Yeah, we all know that doesn't work. And in our research, we've discovered in our, again, over a quarter million folks who have been through our courageous leadership programs, when we ask really successful, beloved, trustworthy leaders what their magic bullet is, what their, the, the skill that they need to have in their leadership quiver in order to be successful, a full 57% of those leaders cite their ability to quickly and easily address difficult conversations as their sil silver bullet for productivity and impact. Now, in my mind, we actually just have a new iteration of this research and that's actually gone up to, we believe it's gonna be around 70%. So this plays right into everything that especially Tracy was talking about this morning, which is, you know, you think about all those things that, that, that stop you, that hold you back, that give you that moment of fear. You know, she had cited failing to act except, except in a crisis, tolerating bad behavior, et cetera. That all plays into our ability or inability to have these courageous communications with our people, our peers, our bosses, our communities, maybe even our world. And as it relates to the work that we do inside of organizations, particularly as we work with large global organizations across a large footprint, the ability to quickly, respectfully, and successfully execute these more difficult or stressful conversations leads to extraordinary abilities to engage employees and enable them to do their best work. It's because when you're great at these, people feel heard and they're 4.6 times more likely to feel empowered to do their very best work. And this is, you know, in listening to all of the speakers today, this is what freedom at work is all about, isn't it? It's being able to enable your people to bring their very best selves and best innovations, best, best communications, best skills to the table. But these difficult communications hold us back almost every day. Even if we're skillful at them, are the people who work with us, for us, around us as skillful as well? And we all know why we don't have these. I mean, that's not brain surgery, right? We don't have them because, you know, oh, it'll ruin our relationship. I just, it's not that important to me. I don't want to do that. Or it'll just make it worse. That's one of my favorite rationalizations. It's simply going to make it worse. I'm worried the outcome will be bad. I'm worried I'll make them uncomfortable. I'm too uncomfortable. 
but really why they don't happen is solely because we don't think we'll be successful. Now I wanna ask you, and I can't see the chat box, so I'm hoping, let's see if I can figure out how to see the chat box without losing everything. Here we go. Excellent, so many exclamation points, thank you so much. Now I want you to be honest with yourself. How many of you know that you have a courageous communication that you need to have with somebody that needs to happen soon? And I would even argue, put a number to it. Go ahead and put in the, your chat box, how many, courageous communications do you know you probably need to have in order to help move your company your goals forward maybe it's you know taking to your company that they need to be a freedom at work member the company needs to be a member you need to have a courageous conversation with your boss courageous communication with your peer you've got misaligned goals be honest with yourself nobody's going to really look at these especially if y'all engage here how many of you know that you have X number of courageous communications that if you had them and they were successful, would move your team's goals forward faster. So if you'll notice, we got some people being honest here, telling us how many that they've got. The thing about courageous communication, which is really a challenge, is some things are easy changes to make. Um, you know, if I decide I'm going to eat breakfast every day instead of putting it off until I'm famished at noon and then I eat twice as much as I need to, it's kind of an easy change. But getting comfortable with the discomfort of utilizing a skill around courageous communication, that's a much harder change. I listened to a friend of mine uh, dur during a presentation last week and he had the greatest quote about easy change versus difficult change or hard change. He said, easy change is like downloading an app. We can all do that, easy peasy. Hard change is like getting a whole new operating system and having to adjust to it and learn it. That's from Michael Bungay Stanner, who's an amazing uh, speaker and author. Um, but I thought that was such a great analogy because to become consistently great at courageous communication, you have to be willing to invest the time to learn it as if it's a new operating system for you. Then you take it to the next level of if, in looking at even the freedom at work model, it's not only you being great at it, but you being able to teach others to be great at it. So what I wanted to do today is give you just a quick and dirty tool that we have found to be wildly successful. You know, we've interviewed over 9,000 people in our 400 plus client companies. Uh, we've got almost a quarter of a million program participants in courageous leadership. And this one simplistic, simple tool has been one of the most successful um, process and skill changes that the leaders who really thrive, particularly during disruptions like we're going through now, um, have been able to augment their toolkit with. And for me, when we talk to these leaders who have made this turn and become masterful of courageous communication, they cite it as the key that unlocks performance, trust, speed, agility, results. You know, I look back on um, that wonderful uh, poster type slide that Jake put up, and you think about how many words in there lead into performance, trust, speed, agility, results. This is just a simple tool that will allow you to quickly try this skill literally starting tomorrow, should you choose to, or today or tonight, depending on what time zone you're in. But I want you to start with kind of a deep breath. I want you to imagine a world where, because you're so skillful at courageous communication, that over 93% of your courageous communications are successful. 93% of your courageous communications are successful because you've become masterful at the skill. The reason I say that number is because that's what our research against all of our program participants says. Now by successful, I don't mean that, you know, everybody comes out, you know, it's roses and sunshine and all of that. I mean that you've achieved your result, people feel heard, respected, and there's a positive outcome to the conversation. 
And we've distilled this skill down to four easy steps. And we use that word steps specifically because this actually creates an acronym that will allow you to create muscle memory around how to have successful, courageous communications. So the S in steps is to be specific about the outcome. Now, that usually when I say this, people go, oh yeah, okay, great. So many of you who noted that you have a courageous conversation, I want you to think about that conversation and actually write down what, what the outcome of that courageous conversation is that you want it to be. For most of us, we, want, we say, I want them to get better, or I want them to stop that, or I want them to see the big picture. We have these big kind of global outcomes that we're looking for. Successful, courageous communications have to have a narrowly, narrowly, I can't speak anymore, defined and specific outcome. So uh, I recently was laughing uh, just a couple of days ago with a friend of mine, because I had to have a courageous communication with a family member um, about the Black Lives Matters protests. And if I wouldn't have had this framework, my, you know, and please, I hope not to offend anyone, but because you don't know my family member, hopefully, hopefully they're not on this call. Um, but, you know, my outcome in my anger and, and stress and anxiety was I, you know, I want them to stop being a racist. Not a good outcome for a short, courageous communication. What I really wanted when I sat down and actually thought about it was I wanted them to simply hear a perspective that was different than their own. That was it. That was what it actually all boiled down to for this one communication. So being able to sit down and really define how you will know you've, you have been successful exercising this muscle, this leadership muscle, is you being crystal clear about where the destination is. That it's realistic, it's specific, and it's almost, you know, you can see that you've been successful at the end of it. Many performance conversations go south on you because of not being specific about the outcome, because it's too big, it's too grand. But what's the one thing that would make this conversation successful? The T in steps, I think, is even um, more enlightening, because when you start doing this, this starts to change the whole thing. The T in steps is to talk about the future. So many of us have these conversations and we talk about the past or what's happened or what they said or what they did rather than painting a picture of the future. It's that imagine if statement I used a minute ago. It allows people to focus on the future and a common purpose, that language has come up quite a bit today, right? A common purpose between the two of you or to you and the team, or you and the community, or I see great world leaders doing this all the time. You want a textbook conversation on this? Watch the New, New Zealand Prime Minister. She's masterful at this. But the T is talking about the future in order to take away that judgment, take away that defensiveness, and to help people come with you to a destination that's better than where you're starting. The E, and this is the true secret, if you take nothing else away from steps, this is the one. The E is the effect. Being able to share the effect that their thinking, process, behavior, lack of behavior, et cetera, et cetera, has on dot, 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 on the business, on the customer, on their peers, on you, on each other. Once people truly hear the effect, it's shocking how even the most steadfast in old behaviors and patterns, people can't unhear that. And 99% of people really are trying to do the best that they can. And that understanding of the effect allows them to unlock their true potential and ability. Now, that gets us S-T-E, now we're at the P. The P is probably the hardest for seasoned leaders, but I'm gonna ask it of you anyway, because I know this group goes after things really well. And the P is for plan and practice. 
And by plan, I mean sitting down, and I've been teaching this for 20 years now, and I will still sit down with a blank piece of paper, I'm old school, still using paper, and I write steps down the side. And I write down what I want to try and have in my head before I enter into the conversation. If it's a really tough one, I suggest you practice. And not practicing like this. Don't practice it with your dog or talking into the mirror, because you know both of those are gonna be a limited feedback loop. You really wanna practice with somebody to be able to think through how it sounds, what their feedback is. Nobody gets better without feedback. That's why a coaching model like, like Freedom to Work works so well, because you can't get better without getting that feedback. And then the S is to really separate from the emotion and the judgment and sometimes the anger, because sometimes by the time we need these, we're ready to grab somebody by the lapels. But if you can go through that step process, that alone enables you to really separate from the emotion. Now, one of the things that's so tough in these 20 minute, and I'm right at my limit here, these 20 minute um, conversations is that I've given you a framework, but now you have to go out and practice and really try and figure it out, right? So one of the things that I wanted to offer to all of you on this call, and you wanna just take a picture of this, um, I'm sure Tracy and team will send this out as well, but we have some micro learning courses that we're just offering for free under the header of Courageous Leadership Through Disruption. And I'm adding new one to four minute ep video episodes and downloads to it almost every week nowadays. Um, on topics like courageous communication, et cetera. So if you just go to this creatingcourage.in forward slash world blue, you get free access to the course. And inside this course, we do have two episodes on courageous communication that you can actually utilize to prep for your own courageous conversation. We're also doing stuff on LinkedIn. I encourage you to go to look at that. Um, excuse me, follow me on LinkedIn, and more importantly, um, take a peek at my TED Talk, because it also goes into how we build enough courage to be able to do these courageous communications as well. And I want to leave you with a quick quote before I turn it back over to Tracy, and she gives you your reflection question. And this is from one of my heroes in business and in life, Shonda Rhimes, from her book, Year of Yes. And she says, because no matter how hard a conversation is, I know that on the other side of that difficult conversation lies peace, knowledge, an answer delivered, characters revealed, truces are formed, misunderstandings are resolved. And I would argue that for anyone looking to build their courage muscle, this is the very first step in a platform that will build freedom at work throughout your organizations. Thank you.